Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel and welcome to part two of my eyeshadow collection. If you haven't seen part one yet, I will throw that up in the cards for you now to check it out. But um, yeah, let's just get straight into it, shall we? All right, so starting off with Morphe. So this was my very, very first Morphe palette that I picked up. It is the, what is it, 35F. And so this one here is still available. I absolutely love this palette. I think it is the most beautiful palette, especially for fall. The colors, the shimmers in here are fantastic. The mattes in here are really, really good. I have no issues with the quality of this palette whatsoever. I think it's just great. And of course the price point I think is fantastic. I think these are really, really affordable and a really great starting place for anybody who might be wanting to you know, pick up a, a larger palette such as this. I think Morphe is a really great place to start because it isn't expensive and I think the, the quality for what you pay and what you get, I think is really, really good. All right, the next one we have is the 3502 palette. So this was the really ready orangey uh, one that recently came out. So this one here, as you can see, you've got a lot of uh, chocolates, a lot of browns, some incredible oranges and reds. Uh, I really like this palette. Once again, I think the, the quality of this palette is fantastic. Um, I think that you, for what you pay, the, the price point that, that it sits at, I think it's well, well worth it. Um, so yeah, very, very happy to have this one part of my collection. Next up we have the Jaclyn Hill palette. Now this one here is the original palette that came out, so it's not, it doesn't have the um, shades or anything at the back or wherever it was that, that, that it is now. But um, I have to say, I do not regret picking this up for one second. I think the quality of the shadows in here are phenomenal and I really do think that this just gives you so many options um, to work with. You know, you can, there are so many, so many uh, different looks that you can create with this color scheme. So yeah, very happy to have this one part of my collection and I would recommend it to anybody. Next up we have, this is the massive one. This is huge. So what one was this called again? This is the 39A palette. So I actually missed out on this one. So this was a Christmas release for 2017 of which I just made the conscious decision not to pick it up. It has only recently been re-released um, on the Morphe website. So I thought, you know what, just, just grab it. You know you want it, so just pick it up. Um, and this is the reason why I wanted it. Look at those shades. So, so good. So again, it gives you that, option, that, that opportunity to be really, really creative. Um, and I think that's obviously the name says it all, Dare to Create, which is the name of this palette. So yeah, I just, I really, really do enjoy it. I think the quality is fantastic. And um, once again, it's a palette I would recommend to anyone. Okay, next up we have the Morphe X Jaclyn Hill uh, Vault Collection. So this one here I recently acquired. Now I haven't really used it all that much. Uh, the, the shadows that I mainly have used are, here they are. So Ring the Alarm. This one here, I really have got quite a lot of use out of this one recently. I do quite like it. I think um, it works really well. The next one that I've tried out is Dark Magic. Did not have such a good time with this one. Um, I do. I found the shadows to be quite difficult to blend. Um, I'm really not too sure why that is. I know that uh, quite a few people have commented to say that they've had issues with the quality of, of these shadows. So yeah, look, um, I did watch Thomas Helbert's review and I know that he recently um, used the collection again and used the um, P. P. Louise uh, eye base and apparently that made all the difference. So maybe it just comes down to what eyeshadow base that you're using as to how to get these to work. So I'm going to try it again um, with a different eyeshadow base just to see if I can get a better result. Um, this one here is Dark Magic. I haven't used this one yet. I do like the color scheme on it, however, so I am definitely going to be dipping into this one soon. Um, along with, this is, uh, what is this? Uh, Armed and Gorgeous. So again, I really like the um, color scheme in this particular palette. I think it's beautiful. So yeah, I definitely need to use these a little bit more to come up with a proper opinion as to how I feel about them. Do I think that they're different to her other Hill, uh, Jaclyn Hill palette that she released? Yes, I do. I think the, sh the, the quality of the formula in here is different. I know there's been a whole bunch of drama about it recently, but um, 
uh, yeah, I look at the end of the day, I don't really care about the drama, I just care about how the shadows perform. And I have to say, it is a little bit of a, of a hit and miss for me at the moment. Next up we have Juvia's Place. Now this one here is the Nubian palette. This was the very first palette I believe that they came out with and it was the very first palette that I got from them. I absolutely love this palette. I think the quality of the shadows are fantastic and it is a warm tone palette so it is right up my alley that's for sure. Uh, yeah, very, very happy to have this part of my collection. Next up we have the Nubian 2 palette. Now this one here is slightly different to the first. As you can see, the pan size is a lot bigger and the color scheme is, is quite significantly different as well. That, that is once again what really drew me to this palette. I think once I work out that the, the formula of the shadows is good, I'm, I'm going to be happy to pick it up, especially if it's going to have different kind of colors in there to really push me outside of my comfort zone to create something different. So yeah, very, very happy um, with this particular palette. Next up, we have the Saharan palette. Again, quality is fantastic and the color scheme is just really unique and it's not something that I have seen before. So yeah, very, very happy to have picked this one up. I think it's absolutely beautiful and they're the looks that you can create with this palette are almost endless. You know, there are so many different things that you can do with it. So yeah, I think it's great. And lastly, by Juvia's Place, we have the Mas Masquerade palette. Now this one here was the original. So this is like the jumbo size. I believe they've recently re-released this in a smaller version, which is probably just as well because I don't think anybody really needs this amount of eyeshadows. Um, but yeah, look, I think it's absolutely beautiful. I love the color scheme and it really does let you create some very unique looks. All right, moving on, we have Huda Beauty. So this one here was her original eyeshadow palette, the original rose gold. Oh, look, I don't know how I feel about this palette, to be honest. Um, yes, it's difficult to work with. Yes, I do think that you can get some really, really beautiful looks um, with it, but Oh, look, I know that so many people have had like a love-hate relationship with this palette. Some people love it, some people hate it, some people are in the middle. Me personally, I'm in the middle. Because of the amount of money I've spent on this palette, I cannot get rid of it. Uh, but yeah, I just, I'm neither here nor there. I think it could have been better. And I don't necessarily think re-releasing it with a different formula was the best thing to do. But that's just my opinion. Uh, the next one that I have by her is the Desert Desert Dusk palette. Now I picked this one up because again the, the color scheme is just fantastic. It is everything that I usually would look for in a palette. Retrograde is such an incredible shade along with Twilight. They are both some of my favorites. Amethyst just doesn't really work too well for me. Um, again it's got like really weird bumpy texture so I don't know whether it's getting hard pan or what goes on but I just can't seem to get really, like any decent pigmentation from it at all. Um, again, and I'll show you what I mean, but I know that, you know, purples are very, very hard to formulate, especially matte purples. So you can see what I'm saying. Like it just, it barely, uh, rubbing, 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 like it just, it barely comes up. And then when you, uh, it's just, yeah, it's, it's not the best to put it mildly. So far the best purple matte shade that I own that I've ever used would definitely be in the, uh, Jeffree Star, um, blood sugar palette but yeah for me personally it's much like the rose gold palette spent too much money on it to re-gift it to somebody like family or give it away um i have a love-hate relationship with it i just sometimes i love it sometimes i hate it i just yeah i honestly it's going to be very difficult for me to repurchase one another one of her bigger palettes that's for sure Finally, I have the Electric Obsessions palette. Now, I haven't used this one as of yet, but I did pick this up because of the color scheme. I have heard some really, really good things about it. And I mean, we'll just do a swatch of this really beautiful pink color. So I think you can, straight away, I'm telling you that, that I can feel the difference between the formula in this palette and these palettes for sure. And I think overall it swatches a lot differently. It's a lot more powdery as you can see, but I, I give me powdery and pigmentation any day. You know, if there's pigmentation there and I can blend it well, happy, happy to do the work, you know? So yeah, I think that her mini palettes are in the way of quality of the shadows are a lot better than her large palettes. I don't know why that is, but um, that's just something that I, have heard in reviews recently and from what I'm currently experiencing myself. 
Okay, next up we have my Too Faced collection. So starting off, we'll start off with these palettes. So this was the Sweet Peach palette. Now, this still smells like peaches. Every time I open it up, I just am in love with the smell of this. Formula overall, probably not my most favorite. Um, I don't reach for it as much as what I probably should, but yeah, I did, I did travel with it and unfortunately, um, I don't know if you can hear that, but I have, it's, yeah, the casing itself is cracked. I don't know what's really happened to it, but it just doesn't close as well as what it used to. But um, yeah, overall, not something I reach for um, as much as what I probably should. But again, I just found the quality to be a little bit of a miss, to be honest. Next up, we have the Chocolate Gold palette. I absolutely love this palette. I think that the shimmers in here are fantastic. I think the mattes in here blend really well. And I think there are so many looks that you can create with this palette. Uh, first off, I was a little bit uh, put off by the fact that there were only three, no, sorry, four matte shades. I thought that's just not enough, but I honestly did come to find that it absolutely was enough. There are so many different uh, looks that you can create with this palette. So yeah, it is definitely one of my favorites. I did have the um, chocolate bar semi-sweet palette, but I did recently re-gift that to my sister. So I don't have that part of my collection anymore. Next one up we have is the peanut butter and jelly. I loved these little tin palettes. I did have the original um, Naturals palette as well, which I re-gifted to my mum actually. But um, yeah, I couldn't get rid of this one. I just think that it's so, so sweet. I love everything about it. I think the quality of the shadows in here are really good. And uh, yeah, just overall, I love this palette. Next up, we have the Totally Cute palette. Now this was uh, one of those gimmicky things where you got stickers to stick onto it if that was your thing. Obviously I decided it was my thing um, and so that's what I did. Uh, this is the color scheme. I really, really enjoy it. I think it's very unique. The idea is that you can create full looks with this palette um, going left to right. So yeah, I just, I really, really like uh, the style of this palette. I think it's just beautiful. The quality of the shadows are really good. Next up we have the Just Peachy Mattes palette. I love this palette. It is beautiful. It is warm tone. It is all matte, which is not something I usually go for, but I didn't care. I wanted it anyway. The quality of these shadows are just fantastic. They blend extremely well. And I would definitely recommend this one to anyone. Next up, we have the White Peach, which is the sister palette of the uh, Just Peachy Mattes. Now, this one here is a little bit different. I'm not too sure how I feel about this one. I think that the shimmers in here are a little bit on the chunkier side. I do still find the mattes to be very good, but they're not probably as good as the formula in this. So I, I'm really not too sure why the formula would have changed um, in that respect, but I do feel like it is slightly different. However, you know, do I regret picking it up? No. Is it a palette that I think everybody should have? No, not necessarily. So yeah, it's just one of those things. I think it comes down to personal preference. Probably not the best quality eyeshadows that I, I have in my collection, especially from Too Faced. But um, again, I don't, I don't regret picking it up. I, I do still uh, like to use it. The next one we have is the uh, Life's a Festival palette. Now, I was so not going to pick this up. When I saw the sneak peeks, when I saw the overall reveal of this palette, I looked, just looking at it, I'm like, it looks like kids makeup. This is not something, this is not something that I'm, I want to own. This is not something that I need as part of my collection. Again, I really didn't like the layout of this palette whatsoever. But then I was in store and then I decided to swatch a few of the shadows and then I decided that no, I actually love this palette and I must have it a part of my collection. So my plan for this is to um, basically, I'm going to depot majority, like all of these shadows and put them in like a Z palette because I just don't find this palette to be aesthetically pleasing at all and it's bulky and just awkward overall. But um, yeah, I don't regret picking it up for a second because I just think that the shadows in here are really, really nice. You have some beautiful duo chrome shadows. I'll just show you. They just are so, so nice. And they're just, you know, they swatch really well. They work, they blend really well on the eyes. I can't fault the quality of the shadows. So I was willing to put the packaging aside and uh, yeah, definitely pick them up for, for the quality of the shadows alone. I just think they're beautiful. Next up, we have the Nikki Tutorials um, eyeshadow palette. So this was obviously in a lot of controversy as well. This is probably one of the worst Too Faced palettes that I have ever bought. 
I really don't know what happened. Um, I know that it's not something that's been obviously really widely discussed in the respect, uh, I don't like it hasn't properly been addressed by the company or Nikki for her, herself for that matter. Probably a lot to do with contracts as to the reason why. But look, overall, I just found it to be extremely disappointing. Chocolate Soleil is one of their best bronzers, and I'm telling you right now that the formula in this is nothing like the original. Um, same with their blushes. Too Faced have some of the best blushes that you can buy in the, on the market, in my opinion. And again, I do not find that either of these are at all comparable. And then you've got the eyeshadows. The overall colour scheme selection I did sort of take me by surprise because if you've watched Nikki tutorials, she is somebody that definitely pushes pushes the boundaries in the way of being creative and the colours that she uses. So I did find this to be a little bit bland. But again, it was one of those things that, you know, I, because I loved watching um, her YouTube videos, it was something I wanted to support her and, and, and pick this uh, collection up. So yeah, overall, I was quite disappointed by the quality of these shadows. I just don't, found, I just didn't find that they performed at all. However, it is something that I have not been able to declutter yet. So I don't know why that is, but I just, I can't declutter it. I, for some reason, need to keep it a part of my collection. So yes, that's why I have that one. <laughs> and then finally, we have the Natural Love Palette. So uh, the Natural Collection, I, that originally came in these tins just here, these ones here. So I did have the original ones and I did re-gift them to my mum and my sister because I thought, well, you know what, I'll just buy the Natural Love palette and have them all in one. And that's what I did. So I really do like the quality of this particular um, eyeshadow palette. I think that a few, it had a couple of negative reviews online. Um, I personally didn't understand why. I mean, I'll just show you like the quality of these shadows, I don't have any issues with at all. I don't know why people um, did, to be honest. I'll just show you how they swatch still. So yeah, overall, I still think, what have I lost here? There, there it is. Yeah, I think that overall they still swatch fairly well. They blend out really well in the eyes and I think at the end of the day, that's what really matters. Um, very happy to have this part of my collection. I do think the color scheme is really, really beautiful. It's a really natural sort of looking palette and um, yeah, I really enjoy it. Okay, next up we have Tarte. Now this one here was the Tartlet uh, Tease palette. I love this palette. This palette is fantastic for traveling, uh, mainly because of course it's so small. It is a funny little palette because you look at it and you go, how many looks can you really create out of this? There, trust me, there are quite a few that you can. I really, really do enjoy it for travel. As I said, I just think the quality is fantastic and uh, yeah, I'm very happy to have that part of my collection. Next up we have Graveyard Girl, uh, Bunny Maya, the Swamp Queen. Um, uh, again, this was a YouTuber collaboration and I had to pick it up for that exact reason. You know, I started watching Bunny so many years ago on YouTube. I think it was back in 2007, I think, 2007, 2008 is when I very first discovered her. And um, yeah, I've watched her ever since. She's quite the character. And uh, she is one of the first um, you know, YouTubers I watched uh, do makeup and I learnt different skills and techniques from her and it encouraged me to you know, look up other people and discover other YouTubers and really um, officially get me into YouTube. So when I saw that she was doing a, co a collaboration with Tarte, I thought I have to pick this up. Everything about this palette is very, very bunny-esque, um, which is of course very fitting. So you do have a really nice um, bronzer here. You've got a blush and a highlight and then the eyeshadows. Overall, the, they are you know more on the neutral sort of spectrum. Um, nothing too crazy here, but I mean, I don't expect anything too crazy either because I, I think that if this is one of your very first collaborations with a makeup brand, you want something that's going to be overall pleasing for the majority of people. And I think the quality um, in this particular palette is very good, so yeah. Next up, we have the Tarte, I think this is the Clay? Clay Play Palette. I wasn't too sure whether this would be considered an eyeshadow palette, but then I thought, well, majority of them are eyeshadow, so I'll just put it in anyway. So you do have a whole bunch of eyeshadows up the top here and some bronzers down the bottom. I really do like this palette. I think you can get a lot of looks out of it. And um, the whole reason why I picked it up was because it was on sale and I think I ended up picking it up for about, I think it ended up costing me about $25. So yeah, I thought, well, I can't pass it up for that price. Next up we have the Tartlet palette. So this one here is an all matte cool tone palette. Um, I picked it up for that exact reason. It's an all matte cool tone palette. 
two things that I am not necessarily the most comfortable with. So I picked it up with the hope that it's going to encourage me to try something different, uh, different looks on my eyes and, and just sort of push me out of my comfort zone, if you will. But um, yeah, overall, I have heard really good things about the quality of this palette. Um, I have only used it, I think, twice now, and I haven't had any issues with it so far. The next one I have is the Tartland Bloom palette. So this one here is, uh, you do have some shimmers in here and it's a little bit more on the warmer end of the spectrum. So I'm a little bit more comfortable with the um, color scheme of this particular palette. But again, I have used it a few times now and I do find the quality to be really, really good. Um, I will just quickly say that I did have the Tartlet Toasted palette and I hated it. So I have actually uh, decluttered that from my collection. I just found that the, the shimmers in, in the uh, toasted palette were really really chunky and um, I didn't find the mattes to be overly great so yeah that's my only disclaimer about that but these ones here I think are fantastic. Alright next up we have Smashbox so I only have the two. This one here was the double exposure. Now this was one of the very first palettes that I did uh, end up picking up. The reason why I picked it up was because I did find that it was quite unique in the respect that you um, can wet your brush and use all of these shadows wet. I haven't been able to declutter it because I just, I still like the, the, the quality of the shadows, I still like the shades, it's just not something I've been able to get out of my collection yet, but at the same time I don't reach for it, so make of that what you will. The next one we have is the, what was this, the Cover Shoot Ablaze Eyeshadow Palette. Um, I really like this eyeshadow palette for travel, it is just such a great travelling palette because of the size and of course the colour scheme is everything that I love in an eyeshadow palette so yeah I really do reach for this um, when I travel. Other than that, normally every day I don't usually reach for it, it is my, as I said, it's mainly my travel palette but I do find that the quality of the shadows in here are very very good. I know that they've expanded the range on these particular eyeshadow palettes as well so I very well may go ahead and pick a few more of them up but overall I do find that the quality of them to be fantastic. Okay, we are really getting to the end um, of it now guys. So um, these ones here are just ones that I, I only own single uh, versions from the brand. So first up we have the Ice Cream Palette by Dose of Colors. Um, I ended up picking this one here up on a sale on the Beauty, what was it, Beauty Bay? Yeah, Beauty Bay website. Love, love this palette. Um, the colour scheme is really, really beautiful. The quality, quality of the shadows are fantastic. I wish I owned more of the Dose of Colours uh, eyeshadow palettes, but I do find that to buy them and get them shipped to Australia overall, I think they are very, very expensive. So I just haven't invested any more into them as of yet. But having said that, I do find the quality of shadows to be really lovely and I'm sure I'll probably pick up more from their collection soon. Next up we have Colourpop. So, this is the only eyeshadow palette of Colourpop I own. This is the Element of Surprise palette. I absolutely love it. You know, I think it's so, so beautiful. It blends really, really well on the eyes and it lasts a long time. So overall, I have to say this is a $12 American. I think it was $12, something like that, $12, $16 thereabouts. And, um, you know, I just think for that price and what you get is fantastic. I really, really do enjoy the quality of the shadows um, of this particular palette. Next up, we have a Ofra palette. Now, this is the signature eyeshadow palette in Irresistible Smoky Eyes. I did actually get this recently in a Glam Raider uh, goodie bag. If you haven't seen that episode, uh, that episode, if you haven't seen that video and you are interested, I will link it up uh, in the cards for you to check out if you want to. But yeah, I did swatch a few of these. I think they swatched beautifully. I don't own any other Ofra eyeshadow, uh, eyeshadow palettes at all. So I was pleasantly surprised by the formula. I just have to um, use it a few more times to sort of get an overall opinion on it. But so far, so good. I have really, really enjoyed using it. Next up, we have an I Chanel quad. So this is... Uh, Next to Natasha Denona, this is probably one of my most bougie eyeshadow palettes that I own. Mainly because this is a an hundred dollar this is a one hundred dollar item, and you get four shadows. Make of that what you will. But 
Look, I used to use this pretty much on the daily for when I used to go to work. It was just, I just found that it was so, so easy to use. It blended really well. Um, everything about it I really, really enjoyed. So for reference, this is the 204. So this is the 204 palette. But yeah, really, really enjoyed the color scheme in this. I think it's really, really pretty. And as you can see, that warm tone can't resist it. Next up, we have the Fenty. Uh, this is the very first eyeshadow palette that she released. Now, what is it? The Galaxy palette. The packaging is very, very pretty. However, what drives me insane is, as you can see, all the fingerprints and it just, oh, it just marks so easily. So not in love with that. Uh, and they are all shimmers. So it is, it is quite a unique palette in the respect that you definitely, in my opinion, I don't think you could really get a full look from this. I mean, you could try, but it's just not my thing. I, I do need, you know, in my opinion, I think Matt's compliment uh, a shimmery eye for sure. Um, for me, I personally find that these shadows are more, they're more of like a topper. So if you're somebody that could be bothered with doing a whole look and then, you know, jumping into this palette to, to top it off to give it a real shimmery sort of effect and finish, then this is definitely a great palette to have. Um, I don't reach for it as much as what I thought I would, mainly because Again, it's, I guess, I, at the end of the day, I'm somebody who really likes to be able to pick up a palette and make a full look from it. So the irony is that I did pick it up thinking, yes, I'm going to use it, not, you know, because I love shimmer, I love anything that's glitter, I love, so I'll, I'll get a lot of use out of it, I'll, I'll apply it to a lot of looks. But usually what ends up happening is I just seem to forget that I have it in my collection. So I do need to pull it a few, you know, I really do need to, to shop my stash a lot more than what I do. And, um, essentially make myself use it but look overall I think the quality of the shadows are really nice I think they are they are really beautiful and if you use it for the way that obviously it was intended to be used then I don't think you're gonna have any issues with it but yeah I think that if you're somebody that doesn't like glitter you're obviously not gonna like this palette and um, if you were hoping to get a full look out of it, in my opinion, I think you would honestly struggle. Next up, we have the Coloured Rain Queen of Hearts palette. This is phenomenal. I love this eyeshadow palette. I love this eyeshadow palette so, so much. Everything about it is fabulous, from the colour scheme, to the quality of the shadows, to the shimmers. Everything about this is fantastic. I would recommend it to anybody. Um, I don't own any other Coloured Rain uh, products, but just from using this um, eyeshadow palette alone, I can honestly say that I would be not. I would be happy to go ahead and um, purchase more from the brand. I have seen that they have a lot. They seem to have a lot of individual eyeshadows that you can purchase. So that's probably going to be my next thing that I would invest in from the brand. But yeah, overall, love, love them, love this palette. I think it's just gorgeous. Next up we have the Storybooks Cosmetics Burn Book Palette. I was a massive Mean Girls fan. Um, I did do a full review on this one, so if you are interested in that, I will link it up in the cards um, above. But yeah, I absolutely loved this eyeshadow palette. You know, from the, the detail um, that they put into this to the names, just to the overall style of it, I thought it was really, really good. Um, the quality of the shadows are fantastic. I do not have any issues with the quality of the shadows at all. I think they blend really nice. But the only thing I will say is obviously this is an indie brand and I think that they have had a few issues when it comes to shipping and all that kind of thing. My own personal experience, I didn't have any issues with it at all. But, um, you know, I will just say that for the cost to get it shipped to Australia and the, the overall cost of the palette is definitely up there. And um, so, you, you, yeah, again, it's it's hard to say because I think the quality of the shadows are great. Do I think that it's, it's worth, I think it's something like an $80 price tag? Probably not. Um, so yeah, again, make of that what you will, but I wanted it mainly because of the style of the palette the and to have it part of my collection. And as I said, I love Mean Girls, so that's why I decided to uh, invest in it. Up next we have uh, my Narcissist uh, palette. Now this one here is the Loaded palette. Love this palette. Absolutely love this palette. This is one of my most favorite palettes that I own in my collection to date. I think that you can get so many fantastic looks from it. 
Um, I keep plugging myself. I did do a get ready with me uh, using this particular palette. So I will link that up in the cards if you'd like to check it out. But I absolutely love this palette. I think you can create some really beautiful uh, looks from this. And again, the overall quality is fantastic. And I think just to what I was saying before regarding storybook cosmetics, that's what you have to really, oh dear. That's what you have to really, um, oh my God, I'm dropping everything. Just in relation to storybook cosmetics, that's what I think that you have to really weigh up. This is an $80 palette. This is an $80 palette. This is a NARS palette. This is a storybook cosmetics palette. Indie brand, exceptionally well-known brand. You, you get my drift. You get where I'm going with this. So yeah, as I said, obviously I think it comes down to the individual consumer as to what you believe is worth it and what you think isn't. But, um, you know, I just, I can't put this down. I absolutely love this eyeshadow palette. If I had to pick between the two, I would probably pick the NARS one to be perfectly honest when it comes to um, the price point. All right, next up we have uh, Wet n Wild. So I recently purchased uh, this myself. I hadn't actually used any Wet n Wild products before. This is very, very comparable to the Anastasia Beverly Hills Modern Renaissance palette. And I have to say, I'm very, very pleased with this. I think it is an exceptionally affordable palette. I think it retails for about $12 Australian. You can pick it up from the Glam Raider website if you are interested. And uh, yeah, I just absolutely love the color scheme, of course. And um, I thought the quality overall was really good. So happy to have it a part of my collection. And to be perfectly honest with you, this is something that I would definitely travel with. And I would be much happier traveling with this rather than my Anastasia because A, travel always runs the risk of damage to your palettes and B, it's, it's a lot more, it's smaller, so it's a lot easier to travel with, so yeah. Finally, I have a Makeup Revolution palette. Now this one here is uh, Reloaded and this is the Basic Mattes palette. Now I did get this in the Glam Raider, um, uh, what was it, goodie bag? And I can't open it now, come on. I love how I'm like coaxing it, telling it to open itself. That's wonderful. Uh, so yeah, I did end up picking this up from the Glam Raider goodie bag. I haven't really used it at all as of yet, so I can't talk to the quality of the shadows. I did swatch it um, a couple of times and I've, overall I found the swatches to be fine. So yeah, it's just something that I have to um, pull from my stash and, and try out really. And that's it guys. We finally made it to the end. That is my entire eyeshadow collection. So yeah, look, if you did see anything that you liked or that you'd like some more information about, please feel free to comment down below. I'd love to hear from you guys. Uh, thank you so, so much for watching this video. If you liked it, be sure to give it a thumbs up and uh, subscribe to my channel and I'll look forward to seeing you all in the next one. Thanks guys.